Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. His I, Colton Robertson, and we are beginning another bracket. It'll likely take us another month, and of course, if we're doing a bracket, I'm going to be joined by Joseph motherfucking George. What's up, homie? What up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Glad we got another bracket going. Another tourney. Another, tourney. another mm-hmm. tourney, yeah. And this one, uh, this one is the most exciting for me so far in terms of uh, just the content of it. We've done a Star Wars character bracket, uh, which if you're a Star Wars fan, go check that out. We've done a Marvel character bracket. If you're a Marvel fan, check that out. And today we're doing Marvel movies uh, and TV shows. Now, is this just MCU? No. We've got the Daredevil Netflix series, Daredevil movie, the, all the X-Men movies, the uh, the Netflix superhero Marvel shows. Uh, it's it's all here. And uh, we did a whole preparation over on Patreon.com slash Coro Bloom where we got it all worked out, what we were going to include in this tournament, and uh, exactly what seed each movie or show would fit into. We did our whole usual tournament prep over there on Patreon dot com slash coro bloom uh and yeah that'll probably be a good way to get your feet wet before jumping in here but if you're if you're not over there no big deal this will this will just be a bunch of fun for you so what way way a bracket works we got our top seeds we got a we got movies ranked from one seed through 16 seed and uh ones will face 16s twos will face 15s threes will taste taste play 14s and so on and so forth. I'm very excited. Uh, Joe, how you feeling heading into this tournament? Oh, I'm ready. This is, uh, every bracket we've done has been so much fun already. You know, it's just in- sparking some very interesting conversations. Um, creates creates uh, some conversations you never really thought you might have. Mm-hmm. Just uh, random little uh, comparisons to be mm-hmm. made that you never would have otherwise made. Yeah, we've done, you know, we've had a tier list, you know, we put placed every Marvel movie in a tier list and that that does spark some conversation, but generally when you're making a tier list, you're only speaking of the movies that are in that tier that you're talking of. So you never really talk about, let's say, you know, X2 and Infinity War at the same time. They just don't come up in the same conversation, you know. So like but they might today. They might today. And uh no, yeah, that's that's that is very fun, and if you are a, a fan of this here, the Penny Bloom podcast, and you're a fan of our MCU content, you'll be aware that we have an MCU tier list in which we have movies ranked on a on an A, B, C, D, F tier list, but we've labeled them, yo, what the fuck, uh, hell, uh, fuck yes, hell yeah, that's cool, and okay, yeah, and uh, we've got that publicly for the MCU, but... We took all of these, all of these Marvel movies, the X-Men movies, the Fantastic Four, the Daredevil, the Incredible Hulk, the Hulk, all of these, and we plugged it into that tier list alongside the MCU flicks, and that will be, and will continue to be exclusively on Patreon.com slash Coro Bloom. Uh, so if you're if you're a big fan of our tier lists, you, you can find that there. We use that to kind of help us uh, place the seating. So hell yeah, you you ready to get going? I'm thinking I'm thinking this will probably be part one of two for round of sixty four, uh, depending on just how fast we can kind of uh, we can kind of go about this. You know, you never really know. I mean, there are some pretty easy ones, like uh, straight off rip here. If you're mm-hmm. ready to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, I'm ready to go. Born ready. We obviously ready. start with a with a one seed versus a sixteen. Um, and the first one seed we have here is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse going off against Hulk. This is the 2003 movie uh, with uh, Eric Bana. Now, let's not jump the gun here. 
Okay. <laughs> let's not no. let's not <laughs> dismiss it immediately. <laughs> no, uh obviously we know who's gonna win this one. Um, yeah, it's into the Spider Verse. There's no doubt about it. Um, granted, I I do remember loving that Hulk movie when I was younger. Man, I I I, I had the big old fucking green fists. I remember watching it on my mm-hmm. old box TV in the living room and shit. Uh, but it it doesn't leave an impact quite like Spider Man Into the Spider Verse did. Uh, <laughs> Miles Morales' story in that is just it's it's hitherto untouched. This um, movie, this Hulk movie, is like one of the perfect examples of as a kid, this looked amazing and it didn't look janky or whatever. You know, like we thought that this was like cutting edge, and then you look at it today. Um, like just Google Hulk two thousand three. No, we've done this um, before on the Patreon too. Yeah. I think we've watched and, scenes from it and it's live like, on Patreon. Like, wow, I was watching that and I thought that looked good, you know, at that point. So like, like the uh, whole like cloudy fucking finale where he's fighting is what's he, who's he fighting? Is he fighting Abomination or I something? honestly couldn't I could not tell you. Let's just see what Maybe uh, Red Hulk. Stan I do remember Stanley's uh Stanley's cameo in this was him meeting with the original original Hulk, I believe. Like uh the actor as a security guard. Lou I Ferrigno? Think. Yeah. Like th- so this like this Stan Lee's cameo was actually pretty cool. Like uh All right. Mo- All like, right. Uh it's pretty sick. But, but Spider Man into the Spider Verse's cameo came at a very mm-hmm. particularly heartwarming time for a Stan Lee cameo. That's and, you uh, know wow. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about this Stan Lee cameo. Um it always fits, you know. Eventually, um, yeah. That one's that one's a good one. Mm, no mm-hmm, refunds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it always a, fits. Eventually, a, I just like to think that uh, that he's just like I don't know because in uh, in Venom's post credit scene or uh, his cameo, he says like, "Hey, the two of you behave." Like he knows right. it's just he knows everything. He's like out of the world, but he's in it, you know. And that's like. What I love about it is that he's Me basically too. just God, you know, like just God showing up at at funny and and cool parts. But yeah, he just knows everything about everyone. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, before we move on, you know, from this Hulk movie because this is the last we will ever talk about it. Um, I'm just trying <laughs> to think of a little I more mean, like, of what I remember. Um, after our 52 year journey through film, who knows what we're going to be doing? I mean, like <laughs> we could we could make our way through all of these marvel movies like all the marvel movies you know not just mcu we could just say fuck it and send it that's true um but um pretty comfortable passing on into the spider verse one of the best comic book movies ever made um past this hulk movie um uh, yeah i, I think is... that's i think it's certain <laughs> uh, um, but yeah spider-man into the spider verse moving on over hulk in our first dub Mm-hmm. of the uh of the tournament uh moving on now to the next matchup we've got a nine versus an eight in disney plus original hawkeye versus captain america civil war now this is fun this mm. is actually this one's actually a little tougher than you might uh than you might initially think of our first show versus movie here yes we do we do um, I, think we'll, I think we'll get a few of those over the course of this if um now the the conversation becomes like a show can bring you much much more enjoyment because it's just simply longer than the movie you know like right. there's more content in this show than there is and in thus Civil there War. is more to enjoy but you know that's that's unfair uh, yeah you know of course just to, to, to you gotta you gotta way. weigh it based um, on its own merit and I mean, uh, we got civil war black panther spider-man Zemo. Um, yeah, we like this movie, it's an Avengers movie. You know, it's not not just a cat movie. Um it's I don't know. You know, I think the obvious answer is just going with Civil War here. You know, like as like thinking, you know, first surface level thought. Like, oh yeah, it's obviously Civil War. But Hawkeye was like I, I here's my thing. I think that if you're asking me what do you want to watch? Do you want to watch Hawkeye? Or do you want to watch Captain America Civil War? 
I mean, I fuck with Civil War. I really, really do. But I think I might go, go ahead and turn on Hawkeye, which is really interesting. Um, just because I, I've, I've notoriously despised Hawkeye for basically the entire time. And that, that right there is its saving grace is that it took a character that was in the trash, like already. No one cared about who cares. Like, Captain America Civil War, you see the poster, you see the trailer, you're already in for the movie. It says Captain America on it, you see Iron Man, you see, you know, you're already in. You're already going to watch it no matter what, like, you know, if this were to come out now. Like, we'd already be in. But Hawkeye, everyone was like, I really don't care about this show already. You know, I'll watch it if it's good, it's good, but like, it's probably going to be bad. That's how most people went into this show. And by the end of it, you sort of care about Hawkeye. Like, or, you certainly sorry, do. You sort of care about Clint Barton. A Clint bit. Barton. You, and you definitely care about Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Of course. The Kate, the introduction to Kate Bishop, the continuing of Yelena Belova, the introduction of Maya Lopez, and the introduction of Kingpin into the MCU. These are all really, really epic moments. Uh, but Captain America Civil War is also filled with some pretty epic moments. Uh, as in the introduction of T'Challa's Black Panther and the introduction of Spider-Man and the first expansion of Wanda and Vision's connection and uh, Cap choosing Bucky over his his friendship with Iron Man. Like, it's, it's funny I that, think like, Civil War is the choice. In the movie, you know, like Cap just falls to la- like of the last thing that happens in his own movie. You know, like... um. I guess the big thing that happens is Cap versus Tony. You know, like that's truly the big thing is like the fight their there. Fight. Yeah. Um, but like really it's not like you don't care. Like after you've seen it once, like you don't care about it anymore. That's like, the thing uh, is that like it, it, it truly is. It doesn't have a ton of rewatch value. And that's kind of the damage of Civil War for me is that it's definitely not one of my favorite casual MCU viewings. Um. Yeah, but Hawkeye, I, I see myself watching it again for sure. Oh, 100%. Like, I'll definitely be watching Hawkeye again. I mean, every Christmas, Christmas season. Time? Oh, yeah. Every Christmas every, season. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, like, I don't know. These movies, like, it is – I think I, Hawkeye just wins. I think we have our first upset and our first show over movie, and I think it will not be the only show over movie as far as we're concerned – as far as I'm concerned throughout the bracket. But, yeah, Who we have Captain thought? America. Who What's that? Who would have thought? I like, wouldn't have. Hawkeye, of all shows and like, and of all movies for it to be like, Civil War is a a crowd favorite amongst. That's a fun people, movie. So, is this a quite Hawkeye quite just did a really there. good job, and like, it's doing the opposite thing that Loki did for me, mm. where I got removed from Loki, and it's a, my opinion of it immediately dwindled. I'm removed from Hawkeye, and my opinion, I can't, I can't think of a thing I didn't like about Hawkeye. You know what I'm saying? Like it was. It was a good show. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm definitely glad that I, uh, like, that I watched it. Because I almost was like, I'm just not going to, like, I don't I care. It until it's all like, out. Uh, and... Yeah, like, I was just going to binge it, you know, whenever it was all out. Um, I was going to watch it eventually, that's for sure. You know, Oh, I'm, no doubt. Like, I mean, it's uh, an MCU product. You got to get the whole story. You're going to watch it. But I'm glad that I did watch it on the week by week. Um, like, it turned into a show that, like... I did not think I would like as much, and I'm I'm very glad that like there's God, more just, to Clint I'll never Barton. forget that three, four, five run because those were fucking amazing episodes of television, just yes. one after the next. It made us realize we're because we were like, ah, well, we won't we won't do a pod on you know on Hawkeye, whatever. But then we we finished the third episode, and we were like, okay. maybe we got to talk about Hawkeye, like because yeah. yeah, um, but yeah. I'm, I'm definitely comfortable moving it on here. It doesn't even really feel like an upset, you know. I guess the seedings are really close anyways. So. Yeah, that's the thing is they're really close, and I hold them in about the exact same esteem. It just ultimately came down to uh, which I appreciated more, and mm-hmm. I think I appreciate Hawkeye more for, for more things uh, in terms of, like, just uh, adding the depth to the character. And, I mean, like, you certainly do get a degree of that with, like, Tony and Bucky, but, like, the only real depth that's added is that, oh, Bucky killed Tony's parents. Of course, Tony's going to fight. Of course, Steve's going to side with Bucky. That's his boy. Uh, That's just like it. it, Like, there's not a lot that comes out of that movie where you're like, oh, shit. 
Uh, mm. It's just it just all kind of happens, and you're just, just kind of like, unnecessary. All like one conversation could have just solved. You know, like yeah, he killed your parents, but it's like not him. You know, like you should be mad at mad, under mad at the people who brainwashed him. You know, right. like and then Cap could have just been like, hey. This is my friend. He's brainwashed. This isn't him all the time. You know, like I don't know. It seemed that this movie did not need to happen in the first place. Like it, that's how I come out of it. Is like this I didn't need you. to happen. Um, but like an Ultron, like a Thanos, or like a Loki, you just can't avoid those things. Those just like needed to happen in those movies. It's like yeah, that right. shit just needed to happen. But I don't know. Um, no, I feel you. Cap I think so. loses. I'm telling you. Cap is overrated. Not Winter Soldier, though. But uh, no, Winter Soldier is about as good as it gets in terms of yeah. Marvel movie. But uh, Cap's just overrated. yeah. Civil War is not not as great as we remember it. It's just the it was the beginning of that sort of just epic crossover movie that like uh, it's kind of it's kind of the reason we go. Who's going to be in Multiverse of Madness? You can really, you can really owe that to Captain America: Civil War initially, because mm-hmm. uh, I mean we had Avengers and we'd had Age of Ultron, but those were labeled Avengers movies. They were not solo movies. Um, Captain America: Civil War is the first time we got a solo movie in which every motherfucker was there. <laughs> um, that is, and like, that, that would be that, crazy to like watch that as it came out. Um, I I remember going to the movie theater and watching Civil War and just being like, "Holy fucking shit, this is awesome!" Like, it, 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 and that's the thing is it it had one of the most epic first watch experiences, but it doesn't have a lot of rewatch value. Mm. Uh, and when it comes to superhero shit, I'm looking for rewatch value. Like that's like kind of what I'm here for. That's true. Um, yeah, and it's I mean that's a very that's a good uh like benchmark for a a superhero movie is it's replayability because like if i don't want to rewatch it you know it just wasn't that good yeah a superhero movie that you don't want to rewatch like it's it seems that like there's no good i mean maybe like okay logan could falls into this weird category of like not a super rewatchable movie but it's just that damn good like you know it's like like uh there's, it's not there's like certainly a, a mix there like yeah. there are certain things that are like darker adaptations of stories that make me sad can be really good, <laughs> but I don't want to see that all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Captain America Civil War was a combination of just a bunch of fun shit happening. Like I could watch the there are individual from that individual scenes from that movie that I love that I love. But I just don't care enough to watch the movie to get there. Mm. Um and that's kind of the problem. Mm. Um but yeah, that's ultimately why I think Hawkeye beats out Captain America Civil War. Good on you, Hawkeye. And And plus Hawkeye. I like the small I like small contained stories, you know, like when when it when it starts reaching over past the boundaries of your character, it's like I'm cool with it and it's fun, but like I really like the contained story element. You know what I'm saying? And Hawkeye mm-hmm. is just dripping with contained story, which is just fantastic. But uh, on to the next one then, huh? Mm-hmm. We got a 5 versus a 12 in Deadpool 2 versus The Defenders on uh, Netflix. Uh, now this is this one's easier than any of them so far, I think. Uh, Deadpool 2 definitely beats The Defenders, but Defenders doesn't uh, quite deserve to be just completely dismissed. Um, if you're going to watch Daredevil Season 3, you're going to have a tough time for a couple episodes unless you watch defenders and know the contents of defenders um and i remember i watched defenders coming off of a a knee surgery all in the course of a day off some painkillers and i really really enjoyed it then i haven't revisited it since but uh getting the refresher with daredevil recently was kind of enough for me to be like oh yeah i remember what happened in defenders that was kind of a it was it's a pretty simple story where all the all the Netflix heroes come together and have to have to do their thing together. And uh, it is mostly impactful for Matt Murdock's story more than anybody else. But uh, it, it's it's not Deadpool 2. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah, like, I was gonna Deadpool say, 2 is fantastic. I haven't seen uh, The Defender, so I can't speak much on it. But I can speak on Deadpool 2. Um, and 
knowing how good of a movie Deadpool 2 is, I can pretty comfortably say it's probably better than The Defenders. Um, but yeah, Deadpool 2, like, just a super fun movie, as the Deadpool movies are. Um, like, very, very rewatchable, you know, as as we're saying, you know, as, as like a benchmark that we can kind of come back to. Um, and, I mean, I just want more Deadpool. Like, more Deadpool content. Like, that's just all, I, like, anyone wants is and just you know, more just, Deadpool. And the MCU is probably going to litter him in as much as they possibly can <laughs> and wherever it's appropriate. But, uh, like, Deadpool 2 is as as good as it gets as far as comic book comedy is concerned. Um, and, like, an emotional resonance that you just don't anticipate. Like, I... <laughs> That's I an finished, insane I'm, part I, of the I Deadpool cry movie. by the end of yeah. Deadpool too. Like it's, that's you're laughing your ass off, but at the same time, you are like feeling for him and like, yeah, brought to tears. Like it's such a crazy, like crazy movie to describe. Like it's, it's not just a comedy. It's not just a superhero movie. It's not you know like uh, it's really like a league of its own. Like there's not many movies like it. Um, and that's that's why like it's always you know ranked pretty high up you know on lists and i think it it's probably going to travel pretty far um in uh in this bracket i could say uh, i mean we'll see we shall Act- see it'll that, that's the no, thing that's, about this bracket is, is everything is strong like everything, everything is, is so strong if anything's making it past the first round it's going to be tough to beat like that's, that's kind of the it's kind of the thing with this but uh mm. i think i don't think we need much more to be said on uh deadpool 2 over defenders i i'm i'm right there with you Deadpool 2 is just a, just a superior product. Um, on to the next one. We've got a 4 versus a 13 in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 versus Ant-Man. And this one is not even close. It is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And I don't even really think it requires elaboration. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Scott, you know, hilarious. Um fine addition to the MCU um and i'm i'm definitely going to be happy in anything more that he shows up in oh um, absolutely but the guardians crew it's my favorite crew um in all of the MCU um and i am personally of the mind that volume 2 is better than volume 1 i i like that mo- i like that movie more i don't i just put both of them like i don't really know which one i like more of like both of them like the first one it's like introducing each of them and you get like like each character's backstory and like how how they're all just suffering together um and and then you know dance battle to save the universe you know like uh you know like it's like uh the introduction in itself is badass and then the whole rest of the movie's just good but two i could see why it could be seen as better because it's like you're just going. You already know all of them. That's my thing. And that's typically them. why when it comes to superhero movies, like a good origin film, like a good first movie, I'm like, holy fucking shit. Because then I, I'm pretty confident mm. that the second movie is going to be at least more fun, which is typically the case, um, especially when it comes to the MCU. Like they, they – you know the characters. Now we're just we're taking the fucking leap. We're going. We're going wherever we need to. And the fact that they branched out into the into space with Guardians of the Galaxy one, and then they're like, yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna bring a fucking planet to life in the second one. Like we hadn't seen anything like that up to that point. That's so true. Uh, hmm. I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two just beats Ant Man in pretty much every every aspect. But yeah, Ant Man gets kind of a bad rap. Um... It's I not, agree. I it's know. just it is kind of just slow. It's like, just kind of boring. Maybe. Yeah, like, hmm, like it's interesting, but like they can't really do a whole. I don't know. It's maybe it's just they don't really have a whole lot to work with there. I don't know, but I'm, I'm curious to see what Quantum Mania brings, um, because now they have the multiverse and stuff to play with with that. So it could right. could be a really cool part of Ant Man and the Wasp to see. But yeah. Guardians definitely beats out Ant-Man here. All right, so on to the next one. 
Mm. We'll have a three seed versus a 14 seed. And speaking of Ant-Man and the Wasp, we'll have three seed WandaVision versus 14 seed Ant-Man and the Wasp. And another really easy shellacking uh, with WandaVision just absolutely obliterating Ant-Man and the Wasp for my money. Ant-Man and the Wasp, I think, underrated in general. Uh, But WandaVision's, it's the second best Marvel show of all time for my money. Um, only behind, only behind one, and we'll we'll get there, but not right mm. now. And I oh God, I just love WandaVision, and the WandaVision era was so special. The first MCU show we really got, like it, it was just such a special time, and I'll, I like it a lot more than I ever liked Ant Man and the Wasp. That's true. WandaVision is its 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 own thing. It's very original, um, like made you love these characters even more um, than, than you already did, you know, really show like transformed their characters, really Br- brought two characters that no one really cared about into the spotlight. And everyone loves Elizabeth Olsen and Wanda now, like everyone loves them, um, which is True. awesome. And it's just kind of what these shows can do. Um, and yeah, WandaVision, like couldn't have asked for a better, not first MCU show, but like first real, I don't know. It's kind of weird to say like first MCU show and have so many that came before it. I'm kind of discrediting like all of them, but uh, the first, I guess MCU, like it's the first one in the MCU timeline, like canonized. Yeah. Like, like cause I mean, like show. we do have, like <laughs> we do have some that are torrentially or not torrentially, uh, peripherally. Uh, I can't think of the fucking word peripherally connected with daredevil most specifically mm-hmm. like is that Ooh. technically an mcu show so did hawkeye technically not introduce kingpin into the mcu and daredevil did be- there see that's the thing <laughs> is that like because it's the this same conversation thing. this conversation implies therein that spider-man spider-man 2 spider-man 3 the amazing spider-man and the amazing spider-man 2 would therein be as much a part of the mcu as daredevil is no, I think the question is, like, if Daredevil belongs on the timeline that we've always been watching. Because obviously, Toby and Andrew don't. They're in a different oh, universe. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. But since Matt Murdock is in the same universe, he's on the same timeline as well. So gotcha. that makes him official canon. You know, like... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I said um, before... Um, like WandaVision came out, like I said, I had this really weird take, and I, like you guys were like, "Nah, like you're you're off, like you're off here, just stop." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever." But I said, Marvel is like, I said that they're probably going to do this, or this is what they like should do, something like that. And I said that they should label movies as like the official. They're gonna have like different types of canon. They have the timeline that we've always watched and that we know and love that's the mcu canon god tier timeline you know the the holy timeline whatever but then shows like uh or movies like andrew's spider-man or toby spider-man would be just multiversally canon and then so you have these different types of canon and, and you guys were like no it's like no way like that's just whack, but like, that's what they're doing. They're just not officially labeling it. Yeah. That's like, that. Yeah. You're, you're, that was the thing is that I never thought they'd officially label it. Ah, like, I see. But like um, Morbius and like all of these things in association with Marvel is their way of saying it's not on your holy timeline, but it can hop in anytime it wants. Like yeah. is, is how I feel is like what they're going. Um, and this whole collection of characters here with WandaVision, Ant-Man, and the Wasp, they're, they seem to be in that corner of the universe where that's that's applicable. Uh, or it's like anything can come in at any moment. You never fucking know. But uh, just just give me Ralph Boner, frankly. I just want Ralph Boner. Just give me Ralph Boner or give me death. Yes. <laughs> Bring him back. Make him. Yes. WandaVision ultimately defeats Ant-Man and the Wasp in our here bracket. Moving on, we've got a six 
versus an 11 and Iron Man versus Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. And it's Iron Man. Rise of the Silver Surfer is awesome for my money. I think it is way too hated on. I think there are definitely elements that are not great, but uh, you can kind of find that with any superhero movie you possibly watch. So I think it just gets a little nitpicky at that point. And, uh, but Iron Man's just definitely an objectively better film, more important film, just all around. The holy mecca of the MCU, you know? No matter how bad this movie could, I don't know, maybe if this was a terrible movie, maybe it wouldn't be held as like this, you know, holy grail. Um, like on the real, it's not that good of a movie. Like on, like, it's, it's solid, but like yeah. it's a middle, it's a middle tier superhero movie. We just movie. hold it to, it's the birth, you know, this is where it all began, it's he built it in a cave with the frickin' box of scraps. Come on, you know. Tony like, Stark built this in a cave. Like, yeah. With a on. box of scraps. Come on. You know, this... Oh. What a... You know what? It actually is a pretty good movie. I mean, it um, is like it is a good movie. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not like it, I'm out here like, well, it's all just sweetening up. Like, it's like we all th- look back on it like it's good. No, it was good. Like, there's a reason we were able to launch this whole universe from it. Um, Ooh. This is the most, this is the best Marvel movie for everyone. Like, for the general public. This is like one of the easiest for people to get into and to like understand. It's not so far out there. It's like, you know, right. that this could maybe happen in the next 20 years. You know, like a dude could fly around in a suit that he made. You know, that's reasonable. So like Yeah, I think this, I think that that's certainly like, a degree of like that was probably a part of it and there's there's also that's probably why Captain America the First Avenger wasn't too far off of its back, but mm-hmm. then they were like Thor. Mm. <laughs> and they were like, "Now, this is the this is where shit gets a little weird. Like mm-hmm. this is, and what's funny is if you look back at Thor, it is more what the MCU has become than Iron Man or Captain America, which is uh, oh which yeah, is very interesting. Um, it's just easing everybody in. You know, they knew where they were going. They knew they had to go crazy. They just knew they couldn't do it off rip. So yeah, yeah not, but, not off rip, not off rip. Silver Surfer though, um, one of Stan Lee's favorites. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. And they, they did it. They did a pretty good job on, on, on old silver surfer there in that movie. Silver surfer is definitely one of my favorites too. Uh, and I cannot wait for him to get folded into the MCU along with, uh, along with the fantastic four and Galactus and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main, the main beef with this adaptation is the Galactus. It's kind of just like, huh, that's weird. Uh, but you know, people weren't ready for a giant 150 foot alien in the sky. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know. The times be changing. <laughs> it's a fact. But uh yeah, Iron Man. Sorry. <sighs> Definitely beats Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer for my money. And on to the next. So we'll conclude this little this little corner of the bracket and these last couple matchups. We've got a seven versus a ten. In X Men: Days of Future Past versus Iron Man Three, I think it's Days of Future Past for my money. I like Iron Man Three. I think this is our first uh, X Men versus MCU film, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is fun. And looking, yeah. yeah, looking like the X Men movie is going to win too. Because I mean, Days of Future Past. If you're an X Men, like this is where every everyone comes together. You know, this is like the Infinity War. I guess you know this is like the movie of the X Men. Move, you know, the movie. I guess you can point to as like you got James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. You got, Fassbender, everybody. Yeah, you, got like, you got uh Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. You got fucking Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and Elliot Page and like it just. And the story's Jennifer actually Lawrence cool, and, you know? It's yeah. like, go back in time, you know? You got time travel, but it's like simple t- time travel, you know, very close. We're not loop. doing end game you know, time yeah, like, travel. Yeah, it was a very fun movie. Like, it was just awesome. You know, Iron Man 3 was cool. You know, you, you see all the suits, 
you know, Tony's just obsessed with building suit after suit. And he, what you I know, do, like, I yeah. So like, you know, it, it's cool. There's cool stuff in the movie. You know, the kid that's at the funeral, um, mm. you know, that, um, and, and I think Iron Man three is another one where it's, it's a little bit underrated in terms of like the way it's generally looked at like Iron Man three, like I, on a rewatchability basis, as we've said, Iron Man three is my favorite Iron Man movie. Um, I can, I can rewatch this movie more than I can rewatch Iron Man and Iron Man two. Um, and I'm not sure what, what makes it stand apart for me, but, uh, I really like the, I, I mean, Christmas is a part of it. So like, that's always, that always gives it a degree of rewatchability, at least around the holidays. That'll, that'll always make it pay off. But, uh, I think it's just the whole, like Tony, I, I, I it sucks that Tony had to go, go and fucking die and an and end game because like this would have been great it would it would have been great if this was just like it and we mm. just didn't see tony anymore uh because he he ends in a spot where it seems like he's at personal peace um he is, he's got his house is gone he's gotten rid of the suits he's he's done all of that um and it's not until thanos comes like i mean like some other shit pops off and he's obviously tony stark so he's always going to tinker but uh I it, it, this would have been a fine uh exclamation mark on his uh on his whole run as Iron Man. Mm. Yeah, he uh he didn't have to see a, a shield around the world, you know. He didn't have to do that, you know. I guess if Ultron never came around, he would have uh been comfortable maybe maybe laying down the suit forever, but Oh yeah, I guess Ultron did come after Iron Man three in the timeline order, so that's that is really where it's like. But gosh, when we start Ultron, he's doing the whole. He's got his whole Iron Legion doing their thing, where they're posting up outside of the city, going like, "Please stay back!" Like, mm-hmm. so he's been working. He's been working, but like, t- see, and that's one thing that kind of sucks about the MCU. In some aspects. Is that like leaving Iron Man three? You have no notion that that's what he'd be up to, come Age of Ultron. Mm. Um, hmm. I never thought about that until now. Like, like after Iron Man three, like how he leaves there and then just swiftly goes, you know, just shoop, right back, right back, right back in. The back swing in. Of things. Yeah. Even though the narrative point of Iron Man three is for him to kind of be done being Iron Man, um, I mean, like not really. He does end the movie with "I am Iron Man." He does like they they finished that off again, but like it 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 it, le- it leaves you in a weird place with Tony that it's just interesting to see where they eventually picked it up. But that that's ultimately why I think X Men: Days of Future Past. Uh, it doesn't concern itself so much with uh, continuity. It's just like fuck it. Uh, while the MCU contain like often falls back on that continuity, so mm-hmm. when it kind of crumbles, it's actually a detriment. Meanwhile, X Men never gave a fuck. So it's <laughs> it's sure. like I don't know anything can go here. Yeah, this next matchup, uh, the second X Men versus MCU film uh, matchup, but yep. not going to be a. Uh... Now we got a for the two X-Men. versus a 15 and guardians of the galaxy versus X-Men. And we've already talked quite generally about the X-Men and guardians of the galaxy on the whole. And I mean, guardians of the galaxy is an obvious winner here. Um, yeah. I mean, if you, if you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. The guardians crew. Come on. Can't get much better than that. The soundtrack, the everything about that movie's perfect. It simply doesn't get better, I don't think. Um, that's about as good as it gets. Talk about a Marvel rewatchable movie, movie. Yeah, that's that's the that the pinnacle of a rewatchable movie. X Men doesn't have quite the rewatchability Guardians does. Um, and it doesn't have quite the story it does. It doesn't have like. The found family aspect can be very, very is very important to both of these franchises, and I think Guardians of the Galaxy pulls it off better in this first movie than X Men did. There you go. There's our first little poetic uh, matchup. Yeah, right. The, right. The, the yeah, found families d- of of Marvel. 
I would say that I don't think we get Guardians of the Galaxy without X Men in two thousand. So it does deserve some some love Ooh. in that regard. Okay, um, X Men walk so Guardians could could fly and travel through space and pretty much do you know yeah 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 yeah. Just I'm looking through this right now and realizing that literally every Blade movie is on the other side of the bracket, which is funny. Um, wow. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe That'll they'll take over. They'll just, they just win. Dominate yeah. that side of the bracket. <laughs> It'll give us some time too to True. get familiar with the Blade movies for real, for real, before we actually continue with the bracket. But uh, sorry, that was just a little side thought. <laughs> I was thinking about the walk so they could run, and Blade was in '98. It's like the mm. oldest movie on our list, so it's like that's pretty. That's pretty walking, so everything can run there. But uh, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy wins over X Men. And it's it's not particularly close. And thus we are on to the bottom half of this here, part one of the round of 64. We've got a two seed versus a 15 again with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings versus the Wolverine. Talk um, about a movie that flies. Shang-Chi. Now this is the the most rewatchable Marvel movie, mm. aside from Into the Spider-Verse for me right now. Um, I can just watch the shit out of Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, when when it came out on Disney Plus, like that was the, on repeat for like a week. Oh my god! Yeah, it was just it never got old, and it still isn't old. Like it's just so fun, such a good like. I don't know that movie like was just from the from rip this movie was goaded like for, uh, from first watch in the theater i'm like yeah i'm pretty like, sure didn't we go like september 2nd or like whatever day it came out we were like yeah we're in the so mm-hmm. we we're and like it was kind of an impromptu thing we were just like fuck it we'll go see shang chi and we mm-hmm. were both like oh yeah shang chi is fucking awesome yeah because i remember yeah we were in the theater and whenever the uh <laughs> that the dark, dark the, dark, the gate. dark gate and we were like this is it this, this is, is where go. he comes out and then we're like yeah no nah. like is it, yeah 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 we were we were all uh, yeah we were in darkness right when they mentioned like the dark do or like whatever they called it we just we get we just looked at each other <laughs> eyes wide like is this no, it and, and, no yeah. way right yeah yeah uh but but yeah, Shang Chi. Oh, that yeah. shit was hilarious. It's beating the Wolverine. Um, yeah, and I don't really like if you if you really want to hear us talk about all the X Men movies, we did just have an episode a few uh, like a couple weeks back where we ranked all of the X Men movies, and uh, the Wolverine fell towards the bottom. Uh, and amongst the X Men movies, that's really saying something. So, uh, yeah, Shang Chi over the Wolverine. I think that's a I think that's an easy choice. Mm-hmm. Speaking of X Men, though, we got a cup. We got we got a we got a fun one here: an X Men Apocalypse versus Spider Man Homecoming. That's a uh, Spider Man Homecoming a seven, X Men Apocalypse a ten. Uh, and this is this is an interesting one because uh, X Men Apocalypse is to to me the most rewatchable X Men movie. Um, I can I can rewatch Apocalypse quite quite frequently, and I do. But there's something special about Homecoming that I haven't really come to appreciate until kind of within the last few, like, six months or so. Uh, I hadn't seen it in a while, and when I gave it a rewatch, I was just like, you know what? This movie didn't get enough credit for how it got Spider-Man. Like, a lot of people like like to to hate on MCU Spider-Man for his dependency on Tony Stark, while this whole movie is about his overcoming that dependency. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, stripping down to, you know, his last fight, he's fighting in his first his homemade suit. suit. So like, yeah, it's what, it's what it's all about. It's it's what we like to see Spidey do, you know, go down to his bare bones and that's all he needs. You know, he doesn't need anything more to win. Um, and you get I that mean, in terms of villains, Michael Keaton's vulture on one side, Oscar Isaac's apocalypse on the other, a couple of stellar actors, but man, Michael Keaton's Vulture is just one of my favorites. You know, like in terms of in terms of villains and uh, 
the way they're portrayed. Like he just did fucking fantastic in that role. Now I've tried, uh, cause I, we can obviously think of like the Toby and the Andrew Spider-Man movies. Like we have our, our thoughts on them. And it's very like clear because you know, they've been out for a while. We, we, you know, all that, but like these, our whole lives, practically these new to, ones, to decide how we feel about Toby's, these new ones, it's kind of hard to like, uh, see how we'll like look back on them, but like homecoming, like has like so many iconic looks, you know, like the yellow jacket, oh. um, you know, his homemade suit, the, like, I, I don't know, like there's so many different looks and like, uh, to it that, that are, that are going to be memorable. Um, I mean, like the scene where he's holding together the fucking fairy and uh, meeting with Donald Glover using his fucking interrogation mm-hmm. voice and holding up the Washington Monument. Like, there's there are all sorts of things that are just like, this is an awesome fucking movie. And it just it just does not get enough credit. There's one shot in particular where Spidey's just sitting on the edge of a building with like his mask halfway up. He's on the phone trying to reach happy and he's just eating a fucking donut or something with his legs swinging off. You can see New York in the background and the, and the sunset. And I'm just like that, that is what I want out of Spider-Man. And how Mm. did I forget that that was in this movie? You know Mm. what I'm saying? Like, so I mean, homecoming it's, it's, it's quickly risen to be like a top, definitely a top five Spider-Man movie at the very, at the very least a Spider-Man movie, but it's one of my favorite Marvel movies period now just makes me realize how much i love spider-man like right spider-man's always good like you can't really fuck it up the base story of spider-man is good enough that that carries like it's just gonna it's just gonna fly mm -hmm. but apocalypse great it was awesome Um, i loved apocalypse and like especially magneto's story in apocalypse that's that's the strong strongest point of it but hard to to come up to a spider-man movie it's hard to beat any Spider-Man movie. At it will be point. interesting to see just how far all of the Spider-Man movies make it. Mm. You know, what like if by if the end it's just Spider-Man versus Spider-Man. Spider-Man it's Elite. Just, Eight. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it all the only movies that remain are just Spider-Man movies. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> That'd so. That'd be fucking funny. I don't think so. It, it could work out that way. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, Homecoming over Apocalypse. That makes sense to me. And uh, on to the next one. Another interesting one that. Uh, kind of worked out in another kind of semi poetic way. We've got the uh six seed Captain Marvel versus the eleven seed X Men Dark Phoenix. If you're looking for the powerful heroine who could destroy a planet with ease, kind of uh, sort of connection lines too, like uh having power that you don't realize that you have, and then now that you know that you have it, what do you do with it? Sort of, you know. So like, not exactly the same, but uh. Yeah, there's a certain control aspect in Dark Phoenix that doesn't quite apply to Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's a control aspect. Like, she was being controlled. She was she had her power held down uh, until she fully unlocked it. But And she was brainwashed and, you know, a lot of, you know, I guess a lot of other things. Yeah, but, but uh, sort of similar stories here. Um, just off, you know, how well the movies are made uh, is pretty pretty easy to make the decision here Um, dark phoenix is i'd argue a prettier movie mm. on the whole in terms of cgi and the things they did on screen but captain marvel it's in the same vein as as homecoming in terms of just how much fun i have watching it uh i know i've said i've said this over and over along with like shang chi and into the spider verse this is captain marvel that's a top three top five rewatch rewatch movie for mm-hmm. me in terms of marvel movies i love watching Get that nick film. fury like nick fury and and captain marvel just together are like so awesome their their dynamic is just so cool um like the whole movie's just i don't know people hate on this movie way too much like way too much way too much just get past it it's okay you'll live <laughs> just Oh, I don't know. Big, just... strong, cocky woman not going to hit you in face. She on TV. <laughs> but yeah, I love I love Captain Marvel. Like, that is a very rewatchable movie. You are right. Um, yeah. It is uh, one and, that is revisited. And, you know, frankly, Dark Phoenix, it, 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 it also has a degree of rewatchability, but there's a, uh, there's a certain tragedy to it that makes it, a little sad at points, like a little too sad to rewatch. Like 
you don't get one of the main characters who we've cared about over the course of movies dying in Captain Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Like true. And you, and you do you do watch you do watch Mystique go down and and Dark Phoenix, which does suck. Um but watching Captain Marvel overcome all the shit she had to overcome and being the biggest badass in the fucking universe. I mean that's she's the best. So Can't I'm, wait I'm gonna till go Captain she says- Marvel. Hey, Peter Parker, again, because she was off yeah, right. world and she still knows and it's definitely going to happen. Hey, Peter Parker. Hey, Peter Parker. I'll take like, that. Oh, yeah. Like that. that there's. It's kind of, you know. It didn't make sense for her to say, hey, Peter Parker, you know, like that, but it does now, you yeah, know, like, there's, there's something that like, can pull through here. Oh, like it, it's like if that doesn't happen, I don't know, like. Uh, anyway, it, I always Never get back that. to far or no way home. There's always, yeah, we'll always bring always it back to road. Spider-Man somehow. <laughs> um, but on to the next one. Uh, that was Captain Marvel winning over X-Men Dark Phoenix. We've got a three versus a 14 in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier versus Daredevil 2003. Uh, this is this is mad easy. The Falcon <laughs> and the Winter Soldier was fucking incredible. And Daredevil 2003 is not. Mm. Um. And, like, the the thing is, is that I don't have a ton to say about Daredevil 2003 because I haven't watched it in 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I'll say is uh, the only thing I remember of this movie. Yeah, it's the opening scene. I had it on VHS. Um, and I would fast forward right to the opening scene where it's Ben Affleck in full costume, sandbags hanging from the ceiling. He has his two daggers. He's just running through, slicing them open, which is really – like, does he set them up every time? And, like, does he sl- yeah, re-slice like, man, them? can't be convenient. Whatever. Don't think about it. Um, all you hear in the background is, you know, wake me up. You know, that song. Um, wake me up inside. It's just a, a cool opening. Um, it stuck with me in my childhood for some reason. I just watched it over and over and over. Um, mm-hmm. But it does definitely does not beat the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, that show brought me to tears many, many times. Many a time, uh, and Ben Affleck's uh, Matt Murdock was not quite the 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 greatest portrayal in the history of comic book portrayals. Uh, John Favreau was Foggy Nelson, on the other hand. I'll eat that shit up. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier f- fucked. Like, that show was incredible. <laughs> um, mm. Sam Man. Wilson just growing to become one of my favorite MCU characters there is. Uh, that last John episode. Walker becoming one of the easily most hated. Uh, I loved Aaron Kellyman's uh, Carly Morgenthau. Like I thought, I that's the only thing I cannot stand about the show is that she didn't make it out alive. Mm. Um, but aside mm. from, I mean, the introduction of Val. Mm-hmm. Um, what's she been doing all this time? You we know? got the power broker and Zemo. Zemo being in the show just keeps going. I I keep I always forget about Zemo being in the show, and his is like one of the best parts of the show. Mm. Him um, in the club. Oh yeah, fist bumping. You know Release his little the Zemo jam. Cut. Oh oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, that that show did fuck and does fuck. Yes, you. It are does right. fuck. It continues to fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier defeats Daredevil there, and uh, on to the next one. We've got. A four seed versus a 13 in Spider-Man 2, starring Tobey Maguire, versus Loki, uh, the Disney Plus original series. Um, Spider-Man 2. I mean, the power of the sun in the palm of my hand, man. Got Doc Ock. You got Tobey Maguire. What more do you need? You don't need. You don't need. I mean, come on. Like, this movie is... uh insane in how many times we've all seen it you know uh one and two i i I don't know which one i've seen more you know i'm actually curious to know i am curious i wish i had like a movies Mm -hmm. wrapped Mm -hmm. like a spotify wrapped i i would assume i don't know i think i I watched watched spider-man one yeah i think i watched the original more 
But I would say when I was younger, Green Goblin was the one I liked watching more. But Doc Ock, as I've gotten older, I've just grown to appreciate more and more with every year that passes. Mm. I mean, this is. I mean, Loki's good, cool, and all, but like, it's not my entire childhood. It's you not know, Spider Man like, Two. You know, and something doesn't take up take over your entire childhood unless it's like good you know you don't you don't even as a, a child Daredevil you know, 2003 didn't dominate your child <laughs> yeah childhood yeah there, there's like i don't know how many times i've watched this movie honestly maybe i don't want to know um it's probably unhealthy <laughs> yeah. but like it's toby Maguire. you know it's our child it's it's our nostalgia it's our dopamine it's uh everything um, I mean, Alfred Molina and Kirsten Dunst. This is, for my money, the best Kirsten Dunst performance of the first three films. Um, her whole realization at the end of Spider-Man 2 as to who Spidey is. Uh, that's that's always one of the more fun fun parts of that trilogy because, frankly, uh, I wish it would have happened a little sooner for them just mm. because... I, that complicated shit way too much. Yeah, their relationship was always weird uh, throughout those movies. Like they definitely, definitely could have done better, but definitely, if we're ranking the couples, if we're going Peter, MJ, Peter, Gwen, and then Peter, Mary Jane. Yeah, like it's that order. Harry, you know, for my money, Harry just like takes MJ, you know, from Peter, like off rip, which is hilarious, you know, for a little bit. Um, and they don't even like really like they're just like yeah me and her are dating now mm -hmm. and it's like oh okay and then but they never you only every time that they were dating it was just like harry on the phone with her that you ha had their actual relationship like on screen was just them on the phone and like harry yeah, just they, talking they, they rarely like, had scenes together um but but yeah I mean, that's like the only, I mean, every other aspect of those movies, though, like, is just, it's a masterpiece, you know, it stands up to the test of time. You got, oh, we have freaking Joey, or what's his name? Uh, Diaz? Yeah, Joey, Joey Diaz? Is that his name? That doesn't seem right, but you gotta, you gotta, gotta walk through me on the train, you know? He uh, stands oh, up. Oh, yes. Uh, is, is that Joey Diaz? Is that his name? I think so. I think so. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, you got that meme. You got to go through me, you know? So that's uh, a lot of classic yeah. moments in this. Yeah, Joey movie. Diaz. Yeah. He was in, He was also recently in uh, uh, The Many Saints of Newark mm -hmm. as uh, as one of the guys in the Multisanti crew. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, <laughs> I'm Siciliano. <laughs> he, he throws out one of those at one point and his, and his fucking voice. And it's just mm. magnificent. But, uh, yeah, I mean the train scene in Spider-Man two and the, the fight scene on the side of the building, like mm. there's just, there's just epic sequences in Spider-Man two. And I think it's just easily, it easily beats Loki, but, uh, on to the next time. Mm -hmm. We've got a five versus a seven. Well, wait a second. Five versus a 12. My bad. Uh, five versus a twelve, and X Men First Class versus Incredible Hulk. And for me, X Men First Class runs Incredible Hulk up and down the floor. <laughs> uh, this shit is nice and quick. I mean, First Class is just—I mean, the first movie that we're getting the modernized version of the X Men with a uh, with a uh, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender as Professor X and Magneto, and it was a fucking banger. Like. This movie is amazing. Mm, those iconic, you know, yellow suits, you know, mm. that they, they all put on on the beach at the end or, uh, you know, for the, the fight at the end. Yeah. Um, I love the, the younger versions of Professor X and Magneto. So, like, this movie, like, I, I kind of just automatically like more uh, because, like, I just like the younger versions of them. And, like, mm. seeing them for the first time, you know, is, you know, it's their origin, you know. So, it's eh, not not really their their origin but the first time they're showing up you know and yeah i, I watching all the x-men movies this was like quickly one of my favorites uh like for sure um and i don't know a lot of cool things happen in it you know you, you see 
the the bullet deflect, you know, into the, you know, that that like first time watching that, you know, not knowing that like that's how he becomes paralyzed, oh. you know, like that would be insane to like realize for the first time. Um, and I I never had that experience because like I knew even before I watched the movie, I knew that that's how it happened. Um, so I never like had to have that realization, but like that would be like whoa. No, right. Um, but how about the how about the fact that after this, like in Days of Future Past, the medication that can make him walk takes away his mutant gene? Yeah, it was uh wasn't it the same medicine that like Mystique and Beast took to like control their stuff? So like it just dwindles their powers down basically. Gotcha. Or oh yeah, wait a minute. No. It also made him walk. <laughs> oh wait. Yeah, no. His powers is not what like he doesn't walk because of his powers. Or like he's not paralyzed because of his powers. He's paralyzed because of a bullet. Yeah. Yeah. So oh yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> wow. Okay. They really don't give a fuck about content. No, they don't. They don't give a single wow. fuck. Yeah. They're just they're like this bullet went into his <laughs> spine, his lower spine, and we're gonna give him a medication that makes him walk, but it also takes away his X gene. And it's just like <laughs> If y'all had a medication that can make the X gene go away. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's like, I don't know. It's just, a, it's just like a mess over there in terms of the continuity for <laughs> X-Men. But first class does definitely beat Incredible Hulk, no matter what way you spin it for me. Uh, Incredible Hulk also, I think, uh, is due for a rewatch for me. Mm. Uh, I need to get a modern re- uh, reinterpretation of that film because I have my opinion of it based on when I was 12, 10 years mm-hmm. ago. So, yeah. This next one is interesting. Yes, we have our first Spidey on Spidey Crime with a, a 8 versus a 9 in The Amazing Spider-Man starring Andrew Garfield and Spider-Man Far From Home starring Tom Holland. And for me... um. The Amazing Spider-Man wins. However, Far From Home has a higher degree of rewatchability, which is which is interesting because uh, that doesn't happen a lot. It's usually the one with the most rewatchability is going to end up winning for me. But The Amazing Spider-Man was the first Spider-Man movie I got to see in theaters, which makes it a nostalgic classic for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time I watched Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, I like I went I went home and was like, "Hold the fucking phone." You're telling me I could just make the web fluid? <laughs> like to- Toby Spider Man, I was like, "Fuck! I didn't get bit by a mm. spider. I can't. I can't shoot this shit out of my wrist." That's I great. watch Andrew Garfield Spider Man, and I'm like, "Oh, this is a whole new world. It's mm. opening up for me." Uh, hmm. Yeah, Andrew. Um, like, I love that everyone is realizing how good Andrew is now or like was. Um, and like a lot of things are surfacing that like he did during like while he was playing the role um, and how he like went into New York in full costume and like walked around, talked to kids, played basketball with them. He yeah. like, he was into the role the most out of any actor. That's for sure. He, he was way more into it than Toby or Tom ever were. Mm-hmm. Um, and he like, He was a fan before he was into the role, you know, it's like, but Tom and Toby, they were just big actors at the time that were asked to do the role. But Andrew, like he loved Spider-Man and was like a true fan. And he like got to play like his dream role, you know, like, I guess Tom's the same way. Like he always said he dreamed of playing Spider-Man, but um, with Andrew, you feel like he has like a way deeper connection with Spider-Man. It it almost feels, um, there's something that there's something that he brings to the role that's just magnetic in terms of the energy he's bringing to it. Like you just know he loves doing what he's doing, mm. and it just like and I wish I could articulate that, like really explain what it is about his performance where that bleeds through. But and that's not to say that Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland don't love playing Spider Man or that their performances aren't as good. But there's something, there's an exuberance about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man that's just like, yeah, that's, that's Spider-Man to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I saw something that, like, someone pointed out that 
with Tom Spider-Man, his eyes move. They're animated. So, like, his his expression is very easy to tell because you can literally move the eyes and whatever. But Andrew doesn't He's have that. Body language, It's bro. a static, fully static suit does not move. It's a suit. He has to, in his body the language... exaggerated express, yes. the way his body expressed things. And was just... once that was pointed out to me, and then I went back and, like, watched him, like, in suit, and how he, like, talked to, like, thugs, you know, like, when he was talking to, like... His body language, you knew exactly what face he was making under the mask. You know, like, you could tell. Like, it was insane. And, like, uh, his performance of Spider-Man is the best. I think the gripe that people had with him is that he's just one sexy-looking dude, and people didn't want a cool, sexy, just, you know, guy. Toby Maguire. Yeah. Toby Maguire sitting at home like, oh, so Andrew Garfield's too sexy, huh? Yeah, like... I mean, I don't know. Like, I remember watching him, like, watching these movies, and, like, me and my brother, we love them. Like, my brother loves Andrew Spider-Man. It's, like, his favorite probably by far. Yeah. Um, and, like, we, we rewatch them all the time. Um, and then, like, when people started saying that, like, Andrew was the worst Spider-Man, um, like, whatever, whatever, like, people just griped on him. Like, I never understood it. Like, I, I was always like, why? Like, I guess some of the, they were more out there. I don't know. Like, why are those movies bad? You know? Like, they're, they're, they're actually not that bad. The, the thing for me that's always made me go, it really is people who were around for Tobey Maguire's Spider Man trilogy. F- the fandom wasn't ready for another Spider Man yet. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And therein, they were going to hate whatever happened. And then we get another Spider-Man, and it's like, okay, now Spider-Man's kind of in the same league as Batman now in terms of the way the role is passed to other people. We can go back and view and- Andrew Garfield mm. Spider-Man with indulgence and kind of like, okay, this was actually fucking awesome. We just didn't give it enough credit. And I think that's kind of what happened. Yeah, because people were always griping about like, um, how like Andrew didn't feel like a spider-man or like he didn't fit the role of peter parker but like you saw him like tinker and make his own web fluid and like even like when he's fighting electro he like you know straps like a car battery to it oh i need a bigger battery you know like you see him go through these like cool little scientific stuff in his basement like to him tinker like all all that like i don't know it's i think like people it, it does seem like they're just trying to like grab straws or like grab it grab an air for something that they hate about him for some reason. Um, no, I get you. Which, I do. which is interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, for me, the amazing Spider-Man definitely beats out Spider-Man far from home. And uh, this conversation has just reassured that for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of view far from home as my least favorite of Tom's trilogy. And I, I love watching the movie and it's extremely fun, but Ultimately, that doesn't change the fact that it's probably a bottom two Spider-Man movie for me mm-hmm. uh, with Spider-Man 3. Um, but nevertheless, I still really fucking love watching it and stuff, you know, but Amazing Spider-Man, that's that's on the higher end for me uh, as opposed to Far From Home. So mm-hmm. I think I got to go Amazing Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, this next one's even easier. <laughs> Uh, we've got a one versus a sixteen, and Logan versus New Mutants, and the answer is Logan. And you know what? I think we'll just end the show there. <laughs> that was uh, like you you don't really need exact. Like, you know, we'll have to talk about Logan more here in the upcoming rounds. Uh, and we've talked about New Mutants on that X Men uh ranking list, so I think that might be a good place to leave us with Logan defeating New Mutants. Um. Don't feel that needs that one a lot just of- makes sense. So yeah, if you would head over, uh, head over to the next episode for a part two for this round of sixty four, where we will continue this uh, wondrous bracket that is already turning out to be probably more fun than any of the others we've done so far. I'm really, really loving this. Um, and yeah, so uh, I was Colton Robertson, joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. I'm excited. I'm excited to get a part two in and then mm-hmm. to continue this dra- this uh this tournament with you. Hell yeah. Uh yes. If you would head to patreon.com slash corobloom where you'll find well over twenty one hours of exclusive content, including 
the preparation for this tournament, including the seeding and uh, uh, the ultimate Marvel tier list with all of these products on it, not just MCU stuff. Uh, so that's that's a lot of fun. If you would head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, where I'll be posting all of these matchups for you to vote on. Uh, very much so. Look forward to that. Follow uh, on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast, and uh, remember, peace, love, and bloom, and always praise Keanu Reeves. <laughs>